Why is there so much pollution in the world? Watch this video to figure out why. This video concerns itself with externalities. Externalities are uh, first defined, uh, where we distinguish positive and negative externalities. Um, I give some examples, I explain um, the effects of externalities, and um, in closing I discuss what can be done about these, uh, these issues. So first the definition. Externalities are effects of an economic activity on someone else, not included in the, in the transaction itself. So the effect is not um, considered when the decision maker makes his or her decision and is therefore not reflected in the market price. Um, for example, a, a classical uh, form of an externality is pollution. Um, pollution is a side effect of a production process. Um, for example, when a factory um, uses water to, uh, to cool its, uh, its machinery and then pumps the uh, warmer water back into the, uh, into the river where it came from, um, the, uh, the, the factory consumes um, at no cost um, clean water. And when a factory pollutes in the air, it um, emits toxic emissions. Um, then it consumes clean, um, clean air without paying for, its, uh, for using it. So this is clearly a negative effect of, a, of an economic activity on someone else. If I would have um, recorded this video atop a busy provincial road, I would similarly get to enjoy the noise of the cars passing by, um, hence the, uh, the voiceover. Um, there may also be positive externalities. Uh, for example, when I record a video um, on top of this provincial road, um, the drivers in their cars free up spaces in public transportation. Um, presumably, they did not take that into account when deciding whether or not to drive their car that day. Um, the uh, classical example of a positive um, externality would be education, where um, you, um, or people who enjoy education um, contribute to the quality of, uh, of life in the country in general. Others who are not highly educated also get to enjoy the benefits of your higher education. Again, um, when I would record this video in my own backyard, uh, my neighbors might, uh, might enjoy the, um, the, the, the fun of knowing uh, what I tell them. They may learn a bit about externalities themselves. Um, and they hadn't, uh, they hadn't paid for that. This effect was not included um, in my decision to record the video um, from my um, home office, from my backyard, or from the, uh, the provincial road. So examples can be both um, positive, these effects can be both positive as well as negative. Um, many of the problems that the world faces today, think of global warming or pollution, are the result of um, uh, an accumulation of externalities of individual decision makers. So um, the environment is able to sustain some pollution. Um, if it's only one factory that, that pollutes, then it recovers itself. Uh, but when, the, um, when many factories in an industrial area would start to pollute, uh, then the problems that we know today um, arises. An externality is an effect not taken into account by the decision maker. So it is either, in the case of a negative externality, a cost that you impose on someone else, um, or in case it is a positive externality, it is a benefit that ends up with someone else. Um, and since you don't get to enjoy the, uh, the value of this benefit, or you don't incur the cost of the negative externality, and you don't take it into account. The result is that when you decide on producing a particular product, um, you count with too low um, a cost level. Um, and you can show this graphically um, in, a, in a graph of, um, of, of price and cost um, on the uh, vertical axis and quantity sold on the horizontal axis. And what you will then see is if the, the cost curve is lower than um, the, the manufacturer will push 
um, his um, his production towards a price level that equals the cost that is lower. Hence, he will produce and uh, juice more. Um, in case of benefits, there are benefits that accrue to someone else, and they're not um, included in the uh, in the market price um, either. So negative externalities impose costs on other people. Um, and since you don't experience those costs, you produce too much of the uh, economic activity. Um, if you would have, uh, have had to bear all the costs associated with your economic activity yourself, you would have produced um, less pushing production further would not have been profitable. Um, similarly, if you would have enjoyed all the benefits of a positive externality yourself, um, you would have produced more of the um, of the economic activity that leads that is associated with this and uh, this positive externality. Um, hence, in the case of a uh, of a positive externality, you consume too little, you produce too little of the good as a supplier, and in the case of a negative externality, you supply too much to the uh, to the market of this particular product. So, what can be done about externalities? Well. Technically, I think there are three potential solutions. The first, um, which is the most flexible one, um, would be um, information campaigns. Um, sometimes people would care about the cost that they, um, that, that they cause for other people, um, just they don't know um, that, they, and that this negative externality, this negative effect on others is, is born. If I would know that my neighbors dislike a lot when I would be um, recording videos in my backyard, I might be willing to take that into account and record the video elsewhere. Um, quite often, of course, um, the, um, there, there needs to be an incentive for the decision maker um, to take the cost that they cause for other people into account. Um, also, if you don't get to enjoy the monetary benefit of the um, effect on others, it's not likely that an information campaign will lead you to, for example, school yourself more. So information campaigns can be effective to the point that, the, uh, that you would, as a decision maker, care about the externality that you cause and that if you would only know that you are um, um, affecting other people, um, then you would already be willing to reduce your impact. Um, a second solution is uh, what we call command and control politics. Um, so you think of a policy that restricts supply or, um, or increases supply with, uh, with regulation. And this happens quite a bit. Um, think of um, smoking regulations, where um, smoking causes negative effects on other people who happen to be in the vicinity of a smoker. So smoking bans in restaurants, in, uh, in public places, are a way to reduce the negative externality associated with, uh, with smoking. Also for positive externalities, um, you can um, stimulate the production of a particular good that comes with a positive external effect. Um, for example, by um, installing a minimum schooling age. Um, you have to be in school until a particular age, um, otherwise um, you or your parents would be, uh, could be uh, prosecuted. Um, this ensures that children, at least up to a particular level, enjoy um, education that has uh, positive effects on others in the society in which they grow up. Um, so you can, with regulations, avoid that particular products are produced or that more than a certain level of a product is produced. When you Im impose a tax on a production process that leads to negative external effects, then that tax heightens the, the cost of the production process. Um, and if you make that tax exactly equal to the level of the external effects in, um, incurred by others in society, then the, um, the decision maker will take the full um, external effect into account. What then happens is that he, will, he or she will reduce his uh, production, um, so he will produce less, and the governments will collect a tax that is exactly equal to the, um, the um, the damage that you do to uh, to others. Conversely, if a uh, product comes with a positive externality, you could um, subsidize the, this uh, this product, um, um, thereby 
um, transferring the benefits of the positive externality from society who then through taxes should pay for this, uh, this subsidy. Um, and you can transfer that to the producer of the product. Now this also ha happens quite a bit. If you think of pollution, um, Levi's on fuels, on fossil fuels, are a way to tax the use of, um, uh, of cars that run on such, um, such fuels. And a subsidy on tuition fees um, or a subsidy of higher education um, essentially transfers the positive externality of education on society to um, pupils who would um, enjoy this, uh, this education. Um, so taxes are and subsidies are economic solutions um, next to command and control regulations and information campaigns. Now there are a couple of um, final remarks to be made why this uh, why, why addressing externalities is so difficult. First, um, many production processes come with both positive and negative externalities. And this becomes particularly problematic when the positive and the negative externality end up with different people. Car use leads to pollution, but it also frees up spaces in, uh, in public transportation. Um, addressing the use of uh, cars, uh, for example, through, uh, through taxes, um, changes both these, uh, these positive and negative externalities. I and mean, this becomes even more complicated when the people um, suffering from the negative externalities are not the same as those who enjoy the effects of the positive externalities. Second, um, the um, problems caused by, for example, uh, pollution, um, they don't stop at national borders. So you could, um, you could do something to, uh, to, to incite people to use their cars less frequently, but then still pollution coming from, uh, from neighboring areas would enter the same, uh, the same country. Um, so more and more addressing complex externalities requires coordination across different jurisdictional um, areas making it even more complex to address these uh, these issues. Let me end this clip with one normative conclusion. Whenever you pick a mode of transportation for your next trip, think of the effects it has on others. <laughs>